Good morning. So, in the last lecture, we looked at uh, how to incorporate effectiveness uh, or other the effective diffusivity or pore diffusion effects on uh, the reaction kinetics. We uh, again, I'll repeat. Like we have the reaction taking place in six steps. Uh, first is external mass transfer of the reactant, then internal diffusion, adsorption, reaction, desorption of the product, internal diffusion, back diffusion of the product, and then the back external uh, mass transfer of the product. Okay. So out of which we have already considered three steps: adsorption, reaction, and uh, desorption. Now we are trying to incorporate the effect of internal diffusion. Okay, so we have this catalyst particle, right? And we are looking at the diffusion inside. Okay, and this is external surface. R is equal to capital R, and this is center. Okay, I told in the last lecture that it is a porous particle. Okay, you have pores. Actual moment of the particle will be torches. But all these effects, the constriction, tortuosity, porosity, everything is incorporated in a term called effective diffusivity, DE, effective diffusivity, right? And uh, when we write, when we use this term effective diffusivity, then we are free to write a normal fixed law for diffusion, okay, uh, in the radial clock coordinates if the particle is spherical, right? So, in that case the flux becomes d e into uh, d c by or d c a by d r of course, the minus sign. So, this becomes a flux. Now, what is the difference between this flux and a flux that is taking place in a non porous particle or other not, not non porous or the continuous medium rather. Okay. In the continuous medium the d is an is a different diffusivity is a bulk diffusivity that we talk about normally. There is no effect of porosity, there is no effect of walls, no, no effect of um, the tortuosity as well. Okay. So, this is a diff, this is a diffusion that is taking place in the radial coordinate, okay. but then we are incorporating the effect of the solid matrix there, okay, the porosity, okay, material effects. All right. So, d e takes into consideration all those effects and then I can write as if it is a continuous medium inside a particle. We already discussed this at length in the last lecture. Okay. Now, what are the equations because the if like why what we are doing trying to do here is to get the concentration profile inside a particle, okay. the concentration profile inside a particle. Now, we define dimensionless concentration psi is equal to C A divided by C A S where this is the external surface concentration. It can be C A B as well. Okay, so I can use these terms uh, sometimes like okay, either C A B that is bulk concentration or C A S that is external surface concentration. Okay, because right now we are not considering external mass transfer effects. So fine. So this is psi, and then there is uh, this lambda, which is nothing but R by capital R. R is the radial distance. R capital R is the uh, sphere radius. All right. Now if we do this, I get an equation for the concentration dimensionless concentration as d 2 psi by d lambda square okay, plus 2 by lambda d psi by d lambda okay, minus psi sorry not psi phi m square. Okay, remember this raised psi raised to n is equal to 0. Now, what is this? This is a very important term, this is a very important term that tells you how important the pore diffusion effects are. Okay. Now, we call this as a Thiele modulus. Okay. Now, Thiele modulus is given by phi n square k n s a rho c r square c a s raised to n minus 1 divided by d e. So, we know the meaning of each and every term here k n is a rate constant per unit area right per unit area n denotes the order of the reaction and I am defining it for the order here n right. S a surface area per unit weight of the catalyst rho c is the density of the catalyst mass per unit volume. So, this entire quantity k n s a rho c is rate constant per unit volume. 
this is per unit area, this is per unit these two together per unit weight and these three together per unit volume of the catalyst. Okay? And then we have these terms, this is a radius, then you have concentration, order and effective diffusivity. And this we can further simplify this or other further play with this particular expression and show that phi is the ratio of the intrinsic rate to the diffusion rate. Okay? So, it represents okay, the relative magnitudes of intrinsic reaction rate and diffusion rate. Okay. And if value of phi is very large, value of phi is very large, in that case the diffusion resistance is significant. Okay. So, Thiele modulus, if it is significant or a substantial value or a very high value, diffusion effects we cannot neglect them. On the other side, like if you have phi value very small, say 0 0.0001, okay. in that case diffusivity, effective diffusivity is likely to be very large compared to the intrinsic reaction rate or the rate of the reaction or rate constant is very small. Okay. So, that its diffusion is not important at all, it is like open surface okay. or the part or the molecules are getting access to every side without any problem, concentration gradient inside a particle is negligible. Okay, right? It is almost a flat profile. So, that is the meaning of phi. Okay? All right. So, now we so let us try and solve this equation now. Okay? We, we go further okay? because we want to see the concentration profile and why we want concentration profile is to further calculate the overall reaction rate because you have not yet got the expression for the reaction rate to be used in the reactor design. Okay? So, uh, we are heading towards it fine. All right. So, this is the equation and this is the meaning of psi n boundary conditions. We already looked at boundary condition in terms of concentrations, dimensional concentrations. Now, let us try and write them in terms of non-dimensional concentrations. So, psi is finite where at lambda equal to 0. Okay, very important right at the center psi is finite or d psi by d lambda is equal to 0. Okay. d psi by d lambda is equal to 0. Then next psi is equal to 1 at lambda is equal to 1. Okay. Right. Why? Because at external surface okay, at external surface lambda is equal to 1 r is equal to capital R and psi is equal to 1 because C A is equal to C A S. Right? So, lambda is equal to 1 because lambda is C A by C S. All right? so, so, we have these this differential equation with these boundary conditions. Now, we need to solve this equation. It is not so easy, but there are ways to work with it. Okay? So, if you assume the reaction to be say first order reaction, solve it analytically. Okay? First, we have a variable called say y, which is defined as psi into lambda. Okay. Now, if we do that and substitute for it okay, in this equation, then you can do some mathematical jugglery and get an equation in terms of y and lambda like this. So, d 2 y by d lambda square minus phi 1 square y is equal to 0. Now, why 1 here? Because order is 1. So, this n here represents the order do not forget that. Okay. So, I am, I am writing it for a first order reaction, I am writing it for a first order reaction, I am making assumption that y is equal to psi into lambda the product of these two variables. Okay. So, what happens is I can get rid of psi here, okay. you can write okay, d y by d lambda just differentiate it with, uh, with respect to lambda and then substitute here, okay. do, you can do that mathematical manipulation and what you get is this. And this is a very simple equation to solve okay. and there is, a, there is a solution for this equation, the general solution for this equation which can be given as y is equal to a 1 cosh phi 1 lambda 
this is this is mathematics okay b1 sin h phi 1 lambda so this is a general solution for this equation with the boundary conditions of course i have not applied those boundary conditions yet because now i have the equation in terms of two constants a1 and b1 which has to be found out with the help of boundary conditions and you know the meaning of phi 1 and lambda all right so wh what is y y is psi into lambda so let's substitute for y now okay and i get my the equation that i want because y is a dummy variable there okay so substitute for y so what you get is psi is equal to a1 divided by lambda cosh cosh phi 1 into lambda plus b1 divided by lambda sin h phi 1 lambda all right now we have to make use of the boundary conditions to get a value of a1 and b1 okay so let's talk about the first boundary condition where at lambda is equal to 0 at lambda is equal to 0 lambda is equal to 0 you have psi finite okay now look at this equation if this is lambda if lambda is equal to 0 then of course this factor becomes 0 sin h you do not have to worry much about it but then here this becomes 0 okay and this term is finite why because cos 0 okay cos 0 tends to 1 right when lambda becomes 0. So, this is 1, this is 0, this is finite, this term of course is taken care of because this is 0, this is 0 probably you do not have to worry much about it. But if this is 0, this is sorry yeah if this entire term is tending to 1, this is 0 and if you I am saying that this is finite then what should be the value of a 1? quite obvious if a 1 is finite a 1 is finite then this becomes infinite because this is 0 right but this is finite so this is not true so a cannot be finite means a 1 is 0 so that implies a 1 is 0 ok I will repeat this tends to this cosh becomes 1 this becomes 0, this is finite, this is anyway 0 by 0 tending to 0 by 0 that means this is this term is finite, but then if a 1 is not finite then this would become infinite that is not correct because psi is finite. Okay? So, that means that a 1 has to be 0 it cannot be any finite number. I hope this is clear. So, when once a 1 becomes 0, I can get a value of b 1 from the another boundary condition. Okay. So, let me first write psi is equal to b 1 by lambda sin h phi 1 by phi 1 into lambda. So, let us apply the second boundary condition. What is that second boundary condition? Second boundary condition is the one where you have at lambda is equal to 1, psi is equal to 1. Right? So, this equation gives me the value of b 1. What is the value of b 1? So, 1 is equal to b 1 divided by lambda sin h phi 1. Right? Now, b 1 is nothing but which implies b 1 is equal to lambda divided by sin h phi 1. So, if you substitute for all the value of b 1 in this in this then I get a value I get a final expression in the form 
psi is equal to which is nothing but C A divided by C A s we already defined it which is equal to 1 by lambda okay, sin h phi 1 psi divided by sin h phi 1. All right. So, this is the concentration profile, this is the concentration profile that we wanted of course, for the first order reaction for the first order reaction look at this phi 1 okay, first order reaction because it was easy for me to solve for this equation solve equation for first order reaction. Okay. How am I going to use this see this is lambda sorry the way I have shown lambda here it looks like tau, but actually it is lambda all right. So, this is the equation for concentration profile I can substitute for lambda r small r divided by capital R and get the equation in dimensional form C A relationship between C A and small r okay. that gives me the concentration profile inside a particle. Now, before we go ahead and define certain parameters later okay, we will look at a profile how it looks like. Now, we can always qualitatively draw a profile a concentration profile okay, from this equation. In fact, we do not need equation initially to just imagine or rather guess the profile inside a particle. How will it look like you have r right r increasing in direction that means r is equal to 0 here r is equal to capital R here. Okay, and then you have this concentration or you can write psi C A by C A S is better we do that because in then I can I know what is the maximum value that is 1. All right. Now, this distance as I go from center to the external surface okay, how will it look like? where exactly it is going to be maximum, it is going to be maximum at the external surface at the external surface, it is going to be 1 here because it is C A is equal to C A S here right and inside. So, this is where I have bulk okay, and particle started from here okay, and it goes towards the center right. This concentration is going to go down. So, typical concentration profile is going to be like this. Okay. And at r is equal to 0, at r is equal to 0 at center d c a by d r or d psi by d r is 0. So, it is going to be flat, it is going to be flat. Look at this, at this the condition is satisfied. Okay. It is finite, but d c a by d r is going to be 0. Symmetry. All right. So, this is a typical profile that I am going to see. Okay. This is a typical profile that I am going to see inside a particle. Now, this profile will depend on which parameter? This profile will depend on just one parameter. Look at a differential equation, there is one dimensionless number that defines everything inside a catalyst, which is nothing but Thiele modulus phi, okay. phi n for nth order reaction, phi 1 for first order reaction. right? And depending on the magnitude of phi, this profile will change. Qualitatively, it will look like this. But you can imagine. Now, tell me if value of phi is very, very small. What does it mean? Value of phi is very small means that the concentration variation inside a particle is negligible. Okay. The profile is fa flat. Okay. There are no gradients. Why? Because there is no pore diffusion effect. The pore diffusion is so fast that a particle before the react sorry not, not particle molecules before they react okay, they immediately get into the inside of pores inside a particle and somehow the concentration is leveled off. Okay. It is exactly or which is quite close to what you have at the external surface. Okay. So, for phi is ve for very small values of phi this profile is flat. Okay. So, this is very small value of phi. So, let us say phi 1 or phi, let, let me call, call general value of phi m, okay, which is very, very small. 
this is some intermediate value of phi and if the value of phi is very large then the gradients are significant okay then you can imagine something like this this is for phi n very very large very lar large value of phi n or phi 1 whatever depending on order of reaction importance of pore diffusion how it changes okay and how it is characterized and there is only one parameter which tells you about the importance of pore diffusion that is phi okay i hope this is clear pore diffusion effects you, you, you should remember this no pore diffusion effects this is the one somewhere in in between both are important reaction and pore diffusion i can't neglect both of them but suppose i am dealing with a case like this then pore diffusion can be ignored whatever exercise we have done so far thiele modulus of course you have to calculate it first to know whether it's important or not not but then later on we don't have to worry about a profile inside reactions taking place at the external surface concentration okay and you design your reactor like what you do for a normal case but then for for a catalysis person he should think why even if so it's like this he has prepared a good catalyst say platinum on alumina okay and he has a nice porous catalyst with very large surface area and it is nicely dispersed that means its concentration is uniform everywhere inside a catalyst particle everywhere inside a catalyst particle the concentration of pt is uniform what is pt platinum okay and i am using alumina as a support and platinum species are nicely distributed inside now imagine if value of phi is very very large a situation like this is it a good catalyst? No, why? Because the particle, the platinum particles, somewhere in the core, somewhere in the core, that is near the center, are not seeing reactant molecules at all. Because you see the profile here is flat and almost zero concentration. All the reactant molecules are somewhere near the external surface. So, what is the use of putting platinum there? It is useless, okay. unnecessarily I am taking efforts on preparing the catalyst, dispersing it very well, okay. but some of the platinum species or the sites are inaccessible. Why it happens? Because the effective diffusivity is very small. Okay. Why the effective diffusivity is very small? Look at a expression of the effective diffusivity, bulk diffusivity into porosity, sorry, nuts and diffusivity into porosity into constriction factor divided by tortuosity. So, if the tortuosity is very, very large, the effective diffusivity will go down. If the porosity is very sm small, pore diameter that matters, if the pore diameter is very small, effects will be significant. Okay. So, the diffusion, so I need to design a catalyst now such that I get rid of the pore diffusion effects, so that this platinum is accessible or otherwise if I am happy with the platinum that I have put at a surface here and reaction is taking place at a rate that I, I want then do not do this, do not take efforts on dispersing the catalyst nicely, okay. just put a catalyst only in the exterior part or the, 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 the part where it is very close to the external surface only in this part right. So, that is the meaning of it to so, this analysis helps the catalysis person the cat catalysis or uh, the person who designs the catalyst very well. Okay. So, he needs to have the knowledge of pore diffusion effects right. So, that is the meaning of all this. Okay. So, let us go ahead now. Now, we understood how the concentration changes inside a particle. We are going to make use of this and get a rate equation that we want for the reactor design. See, the ultimate aim is to design a reactor. Okay. 
ultimate aim is to design a reactor. So, before we go ahead, so let us get back to our CSTR. So, suppose I have a CSTR, in that I have this catalyst particles. Remember what did I write? F A 0 minus F A plus R A into W is equal to 0. W is the weight of a catalyst, right? And I express sometimes I put a dash here, okay. Like if you see notation in Fogler's book, okay, use R A dash here, okay. It is per unit weight of the catalyst. Okay. Now, this equation I told you last time before we started our discussion on diffusion effects, this term is nothing but the one that is obtained from either Langmuir-Schulz mechanism or Eleridial mechanism, whatever, taking into consideration adsorption, desorption, and reaction. Okay, so this particular term. Now, what we are looking at is how this term is going to get modified if you have pore diffusion effects also present. Okay, so that's the exercise we are doing. So this is a design exercise. I'm just talking about CSTI. It can be applied to a plug flow reactor as well. Okay, but then what is the objective of this entire exercise that we have been doing is to look at this particular param rather parameter, okay, the rate of reaction. This variable, how does it change now? Okay. How do we incorporate the effect of pore diffusion effects, pore diffusion, all right. So, let us go ahead. I have this equation concentration profile psi is equal to C A divided by C A S is equal to 1 by lambda sin phi 1 lambda divided by sin h phi 1 okay, for the first order reaction. Now, I am going to define a factor which is very very important and is going to help us later a lot for the reactor design. Okay. So, what is that factor which is effectiveness factor. Okay. So, let me call this as effectiveness factor. I am going to define this first and then get an expression for it. Okay. This is the effectiveness factor. As the name says, it tells me how effective is the catalyst, how effective is the catalyst. Now, I am this particular factor is going to incorporate the effect of pore diffusion. If the effectiveness is very large, that means pore diffusion effects are insignificant. If the effectiveness is less, then the pore diffusion effects are more. So, it works exactly opposite to Thiele modulus. Okay. Thiele modulus means if the effectiveness sorry, if Thiele modulus is large, then the pore diffusion effects are significant, the resistance is significant. If Thiele modulus is small, the resistance is small, whereas effectiveness factor is exactly opposite. So, we are going to see a, an inverse relationship between these two eta and phi. Okay. That relationship is going to be inverse, but not so straightforward. We will see how it works. There is an advantage. You may ask me why you are defining two parameters or another parameter. So, we'll, we'll, it will be clear as and when we go and solve equations later, because effectiveness factor tells you many things okay, uh, which are like quickly you can estimate the importance. Now, phi value can vary from 0 to infinity, whereas effectiveness factor will varies from 0 to 1 and sometimes it can be greater than 1, we will we'll talk about it. Okay. Now, this effectiveness factor is nothing but, now listen to me carefully, this is the observed rate Okay, this is the observed rate of the reaction or actual rate observed or actual rate. That means, if I do experiments, whatever rate I get okay, divided by, now this is very important, the rate calculated at the external surface, rate calculated at the external surface conditions. How do you calculate the rate at the external surface? What do you need to calculate the rate at the external surface? You need external, so you need concentration. So, this concentration is not a concentration inside, but the external surface concentration. In our case, it is CAS or CAB whatever. Okay. You need temperature also, 
we are not talking about non isothermal reactions so far but then later on we'll talk about that as well so i'm just calculating rate at the external conditions it can be concentration it can be temperature because for rate calculation i need temperature also because rate constant is function of temperature okay so i'm calculating at a external surface what does it mean let me write it down in words okay because this concept is quite important let me write down in words rate calculated at the external surface it means that let's assume or let's consider a hypothetical situation where you have the surface which is present inside a catalyst the surface which is present inside a catalyst okay is opened up to the external environment to the external environment so this is your cas what was happening before that the, there was a diffusion taking place some of the sides inside we are seeing less concentration than external surface concentration now i am imagining a situation where entire surface is opened up so let it be say 500 meter square per gram let it be a football ground whatever okay a large external surface but which is open to the external conditions so that cas so the, all the sides on the surface are going to see this. Okay. So the rate calculated under those conditions for this concentration is going to be much larger compared to what it would be when calculated for inside particle when the concentration goes down in the presence of pore diffusion effects. So the rate here is smaller because the concentration is less. Whereas, the rate here is large because all the sides are seeing higher concentration or larger concentration which is there at the external surface. So, imagine two scenarios. So, what I am doing is I am comparing this with this. So, rate calculated at the external surface is nothing but rate when the area or all the catalytic species is exposed to the external condition. Conditions means C A S and T S. I hope it is clear. I am comparing these two scenarios. Comparing says inter so through eta. So eta now eta is a rate for this divided by rate for this. Okay. And this rate is going to be smaller. In most of the cases, there are exceptional situations where this rate is higher. We will come back come to that. Okay. But otherwise, in normal situation, this rate is smaller than this rate. Okay. So, I am going to see the value of eta to be less than 1. Okay. So, value of eta is less than 1. Now, eta is R A since it is reactant let me call it minus R A divided by minus R A at surface okay. minus R A at surface. It can so it depends like it can per unit volume with per unit weight it can be R A dash divided by minus R A dash S it is all units okay, that matter. Okay. So, dash is taking care per unit area. Okay. Then there is another thing called as per unit per unit surface, per unit surface, per unit volume, per unit weight, per unit surface. Oh, sorry, it, it would be other way around it would be per unit volume per unit weight and per unit area all right so whatever so what we are doing here is we are looking at a rate which is observed rate actual rate divided by the rate calculated at the external surface okay so so we can say that say let's take this particular ratio that is minus r a dash which is per unit weight of the catalyst into mass of the catalyst 
divided by minus R A dash S into mass of the catalyst, right. What is the unit of this? This is per unit weight of the catalyst into weight. So, it is the unit is going to be moles per second divided by moles per second. So, I am going to evaluate this or get the expression for this in terms of moles per second and substitute here and get a value of eta. So, let us let us try and get a get a numerator first. Okay. So, let me call this as m a divided by m a s that is moles per second reaction rate actual reaction rate divided by moles per second reaction rate calculated at the external surface. Okay. So, let us get the expression for m a let us get the expression for m a that is or other m a s first that is easy to understand okay. that is calculated at the external surface. So, it is rate per unit area into surface area per mass of the catalyst into mass of the catalyst right. Okay. So, rate per unit area is unit surface area is say k rate constant into C A s I am calculating at external surface. So, C A s into surface area S A right in terms of density mass of the catalyst is rho C into 4 third pi R q all right. So, this is m a s I am going to use this later. Now, let us look at m a let us look at m a I will bring back this particular slide again ok fine. What is m a? m a is the observed rate. Now, how do I calculate the observed rate? Now, I know the concentration profile inside a catalyst let us assume first order reaction now I know that psi is equal to whatever that sin h 5 1 lambda divided by sin h 5 1 right. So, that concentration profile I know ok. Now, you have this catalyst particle inside which there is a concentration gradient right and then I know what is the gradient at external surface. So, if I am sitting at external surface I know how many molecules are going inside, okay. how many molecules are going inside. At steady state, there is no accumulation inside. So, if I, if I am at the external surface and just watching number of molecules going inside a particle, calculate the rate there, calculate the flux there, then that is nothing but the rate of the reaction. Okay. Because whatever happening inside, okay, the gradient that is generated will is based on the re reaction that is taking place inside it is because the reaction takes place inside that you have the gradient ok that you have the gradient inside ok it is because of the reaction. So, I am taking in, into effect or taking into account the effect of reaction. So, if I am sitting here and just observing number of molecules going inside then it is the rate of the reaction ok. So, so how do I quantify it? How do I quantify it? Quantify it. It is nothing but a flux at the external surface into area. Okay, into the area. What is the area? Area is this external surface area and flux at the external surface. So, it is nothing but four pi r square d e into d c a s by d r ok or in the dimensionless form or other if I just want to get a gradient in the in terms of psi that we have defined earlier it is going to be d psi by d lambda at lambda is equal to 1 not sorry here it should be C A and at the external surface that is r is equal to capital R ok. So, I have this particular expression for the actual rate. So, this is actual rate 
number of molecules going inside per unit time. Okay. What is the unit of dE into dCa by dr? This is moles per second per meter square per unit area and I am multiplying it by the area. So, the unit is moles per time. Let me write it. Okay. So, this has a unit moles per meter cube that is concentration into meter that is radius. Okay. Right. This is a unit of dCa by dr. What is the unit of dE? Unit of dE is meter square per second. So, what is the unit of this product? Moles per this meter square into second. And if I multiply it by area in which you have r square, so meter square, so moles per second. The unit of this entire this thing is moles per second. Unit of ma, that is what I want. Okay. So look at the expression for eta that we have got. So this is eta. Eta is ma divided by mas. And this is nothing but moles per second divided by moles per second. So, I have got expressions for MA and MAS, right. So, I am just going to substitute for MA and MAS in eta and see what I get. So, eta is equal to MA that is 4 pi r square CAS D. divided by M A S K 1 C A S S A rho C 4 third pi r cube. So, this is eta. Now, I can get expression of for eta if I know this and this is something that I have already calculated or rather I know d psi by d lambda I substitute for lambda is equal to 1 and I get a expression for this. So, how do I get that? Psi is nothing but one by lambda sin h phi one lambda divided by sin h phi one. Okay. This can give me d psi by d lambda and if I substitute for lambda is equal to one, what I get is d psi by d lambda at lambda is equal to 1 is equal to phi 1 cot h phi 1 minus 1. Phi 1 is Thiele modulus for the first order reaction. Okay. You can you can do it, it is just a mathematical jaggery. Okay. So, you have you can get a value of d psi by d lambda at lambda equal to 1. Substitute for this in the expression for the effectiveness factor. Okay substitute for this in the expression for the effectiveness factor here. Okay. What do you get? It is going to be a big expression, but easy to understand just doing it systematically. So, you know the meaning of each and every term there. Okay. So, eta is equal to 4 pi r d e c a s phi 1 cot h phi 1 minus 1 divided by k 1 s a rho c 4 third pi r cube right into yeah that is it. Okay. So, this is the expression for eta. Now, let me just play with this 3 into 1 divided by k 1 s a rho c r square divided by d e okay, into phi 1 cot h phi 1 minus 1. Okay. And this what is this? This is nothing but the Thiele modulus. Right. So, I have eta equal to 3 divided by phi 1 square okay, into phi 1 cot h phi 1 minus 1. 
So, I have got the expression for eta in terms of phi all right. This is what I wanted I told you there is a relationship between phi and eta and this is a slightly complicated relationship we will continue with this in the next lecture okay? and I will tell you more about it. Okay? But remember as phi increases theta sorry eta decreases okay? effectiveness factor is more means catalyst is effective porosity or pore diffusion effects are less. Okay? So, we will continue with this in the next lecture thanks.